none of this information is confidential. I am very careful in putting, in collating these because moment something goes into the confidential arena, I know you don't have access to it. And I know you can't bring it out, let's say. But none of these is in the confidential space. They are uh, typically the legalese used for it is information in the public domain. Which means it's out there. Either you filed it with the ROC, the registrar of companies, or media has talked about it, or pretty much, you know, everybody in that space knows about it. You may have had some experience. You go to a customer and a customer says, oh, you know, your company is launching this product and you don't even know anything about it. Have you had that experience? Customer tells you something about your organization that you didn't know. And that's happening today with large organizations. You don't even know. I mean, you're all, you all operate in such silos, right, in IT? So you don't even know what's happening in the next cubicle. And there, the how does the customer know? How does he know you had a press conference yesterday in Goa? Because it's, you know, information out in the public domain, okay? The third and the most dangerous thing that can happen with respect to your corporate brand is, Customers may like your corporate brand, but may not like your product extension. A good example is, I mean, I'm taking a non-IT example. A good example is when Nirma launched luxury bathing soap, Nima. Everybody said Nirma is a great brand as a detergent, but not a great brand as a bathing soap, right? They even tried changing the name. They took out the R from it. They called it Nima. NIMA. Even then it didn't work. Even now you see Sonali Bendra used to be the brand ambassador. One odd time you still see the ad on television, but you hardly see any movement in the product, right? So the third bigger danger is you may have a wonderful corporate brand, but maybe that doesn't lend itself to product extension. 